Ellen McCauley, Pray It Up in Syracuse, New York. And we just witnessed, you know, Lena doing a beautiful uh, witness as to what has been her journey. And one of the themes that I, I just heard her say over and over as she was chatting with us all is the self-acceptance part, the trusting of our own goodness, that we are valuable enough we are God's only creation. As Holly said when she was doing the Bible, Bible verse, the only Holly, the only Mark, Bob, Ellen, Lena, we are the only ones. And we have to trust ourselves that we can change, that we can take care of our bodies, take care of how we eat. And we need to change how we see ourselves. If we see ourselves as miserable failures, if we see ourselves as, as people who've always made mistakes, then that stinking thinking we talked about last week will become part of who we are. It's so funny because uh, those of you who came Friday night, you know, I had my 32-year-old daughter, my 18-year-old, our 18-year-old son here, and we talked about pray it off. We, you know, we went out, we talked about pray it off, and my 18-year-old son was like, "Mom, I've been having so much stinking thinking about college and about this and about that," and my daughter's like, "Oh, it was so helpful." And Vince goes, "I love pray it off. Pray it off's awesome." You know, here I've been doing this since he was what 12 years old, and he just loved. They're, they're pray it off believers. And even Gandhi wrote, your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. If you think you will never lose the weight and keep it off, guess what? You never will lose the weight and keep it off. You have to start believe. You have to start to believe that we are enough, that we are valuable that we are what we are right now, today, uh, April 3rd, 2014. We need to believe and get out of our feelings of insecurity and fear and anxiety, and, and then we, we want to make ourselves look good, so we sometimes we overcompensate, we feel ashamed, we hide. There's so many mechanisms that we've used over the years to deal with our feelings drinking, the things we've talked about before. But if we trust that God's created us, that he loves us, that he forgives us, that's the first part. We're perfectly lovable. We're wonderfully human. We're precious, worthy, and whole. When I was at Lemoyne College in 1972, uh, we went to the cafeteria, and I'm from a small town. I mean, I I, can, I was very sheltered, and, and I, I went into the, the cafeteria, they had posters hanging, and I, we didn't see a lot of posters in all my rides, and one of the posters they had hanging in the, in the cafeteria was this this little boy, and you could tell that he like, was like in an alley, and 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 um, he looked like he was hungry and said, can you help me? Because God doesn't make junk. And I just stood there for a minute and I just looked at it and I said, like, God doesn't make junk. None of us are junk. We are valuable. We're lovable. And we need to believe that ourselves. And the first thing we need to do is say, can God really help us? Lena, did God really help you? Most definitely. Amen. Uh, uh, Harold, did God help you? He, he is there to help us. But the first thing we have to do is surrender our will to God and let him take charge. Let me read that again. We need to surrender our will to God and let him take charge. Because what we'll do is we'll say, oh God, yes, I surrender to you. You take charge. Oh, but not there. Not in that area of my life. Not here. Not there. And, and they use Jesus and the Blessed Virgin as examples. I don't even know if it's in this article, but I loved it. The Blessed Virgin said, well, not, you know, as you say, I will do it. She said, yes, wait, I, I'm a virgin, I'm going to have a baby, and it's going to be the Son of God. Okay, that's what you said, I'll do it. And Jesus is like, not my will, but your will be done. Okay, okay, Lord. They surrendered the Blessed Virgin, Jesus. We need to surrender to God. Because so often we think we just need to try harder. You know, I've been going through this a little bit myself. You know, I, 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 I lost weight, lost weight, got to a certain point, and I've been having a heck of a time. Went to the doctors, not a thing wrong with me. And you know what I thought? You know, maybe I'm trying too hard. Maybe I just need to say, Jesus, I trust in you. Help me with this. Help me to get to where I need to be. Maybe he's saying, you're where you need to be, Ellen. 
I'm listening. Whatever he tells me, I will listen to. We need to really let God help us because if we don't, what is the first thing we do? We work ourselves into a frenzy. We're trying to exercise harder and eat less and then we give up and we get tired and we, we end up eating more and drinking more. We just think it's a matter of self-control and I have no willpower. I hear so many people say, I have no willpower. We need God power. And I love number two in this article. We give up. Giving up is another way of trying to be in control. I never thought of it that way. Giving up is another way of trying to be in control. Think about that. If you've made the decision that it's not going to work and there's no point in trying, you're trying to control the outcome. I've, I've told you before, I've had people join this, not even join the group, because they already know it's not going to work. How's that for control? It's not going to work. Why should I join it? Giving up is another way of trying to be in control. I just love that. I never thought of it that way. I'm trying not to lift my fingers, but I can't help it. I can't turn the page. Okay. <laughs> then what we need to do, uh, here's where it talked about Mary letting go, Jesus letting go. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Humble ourselves before God. God has us covered. And so often we think we have to talk to God about the big things. We have to talk to God about, you know, the jobs and the sicknesses and the illnesses. But God cares about everything. God cares about conversation. You know, I loved having our daughter Shannon home. She hasn't been home in a year and a half. And there's Skyping, there's there's phone calls, but there's nothing like that face-to-face. -face. And we were like, talking-talking. I was exhausted all week because I was up late and going to work. But that's what God wants. He wants to know. I asked her everything. Tell me about the ship. Who'd you meet? Ba 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 ba. And nothing was too small. She's like, well, I go, what about the food? What about this? What about that? I wanted to hear it all. I was eating it up, soaking it in, because I was interested. And that's how God is. You know, God cares... It, it, my new shoes are kind of tight, God. Can you believe it? He's like, well, you know, you should have tried them out of the store. You know, he's talking to you. <laughs> he has a conversation with you. He has us covered and he loves us. I'm going to stop right there, Bobby. <laughs>